Well, welcome back to Pro Photo Insights. I apologise for holding the microphone in my hand and looking a bit of a, a wally, but um, we had a few problems with the wind noise on the last video, and it was it was pretty awful. So I'm still looking into a better way of doing this. Um, so I thought, well, I'll hold it on this episode and see if that's um, any better. Well, you've had a couple of episodes where we haven't been in a field, so uh, as a treat, I thought we'd bring you back into one. And uh, tonight we're in this lovely uh, field here, and we've got this lovely uh, barn in the background uh, which caught my eye the other day and I thought it'd be nice to come down here and do some uh, do some low light photography again um, the reason I'm covering this again is the first episode we did some with these star trails and uh, the quality of the video then was uh, appalling uh, I'm not saying it's got a lot better but um, hopefully yeah, hopefully it has um, so uh, and there's also been a lot of discussions um, on the forum of late about this sort of thing so I thought it might be fun to come out and do a bit more I brought my million uh, million candle torch out with me again tonight so uh, we'll try have a go at using that I've got a bit of a dilemma though um, this side of the building is really interesting it's got these nice wooden frames and uh, you can see obviously inside the building um, but the other side is actually uh, I think uh, uh, will create a nicer composition it's a bit of a cleaner image this lovely tree in the background is a bit more clear on that side so Time permitting, I'm going to try and do one of each side if I can. So uh, we're going to give that a go. Um, I've also got my uh, my little uh, strap-on head torch. Uh, again, look a bit of a wally with that on as well, but um, it's very useful and hopefully it will save me from falling over and breaking my neck. Okay, I just set the uh, microphone back on my lapel while I just show you this torch. This is the uh, this is the torch um, that we're using. It's a million candle torch. Um, fantastic handy little bit of kit i'm just going to switch it on for you so you can have a look um i've also bought a woolworths bag now woolworths have just gone gone under so this is my homage to uh, to the store um but we're going to use this we're going to put the torch inside the bag and this will hopefully just help us diffuse the lighting uh, from the torch and um, just to soften it a little bit We can now start to adjust the image and get the kind of tones uh, correct uh, for what we want. Uh, I'm going to just make a levels adjustment, um, and this is going to serve to show me what's uh, what's happening in the image. And if we're going a bit too uh, too dark or too bright in any of the uh, parts of the image, this will tell us uh, that. Uh, hold down the Alt key and just click on the highlight uh, highlight stopper there, and that just shows us what we knew already: uh, the bits that are going quite bright. There's a few bits of uh, grass or that uh, that reedy type of stuff there, and at the shadow end, uh, it's the uh, it's obviously the background here, which we're not worried about, and also a bit at the top of the sky. Now, actually, I think we can come down a bit darker with that. So, click OK. Just leave that one in place for now. Make a curves adjustment layer, like so. And we're basically just going to bring down the image a little bit like that and just raise the top up so we've got a little bit of contrast going into the image not too much like so and that just uh, darkens up our sky a bit it was going a little bit noisy there where I've uh, perhaps lightened it a little bit too much in camera raw and uh, we don't need it as light as that but we do want these stars to show up um, so now we can just uh, double click on the levels again and just wait for that to open and we can just hold down the old key on our shadow and just see uh, what change has gone there and that still looks okay we'll leave that where it is so we can even go a bit dark if we want we won't for now we'll just leave it at that and that's just helped uh, just bring out a bit more uh, contrast to the image Right, the next thing we're going to do is do some selective curves on, on the image. And the first thing I want to do is just lighten this uh, tree up here. Um, you'll notice in the picture we've got these kind of pools of light where the uh, where I was painting with the torch. And I've created these like, little pools. So I want to um, bring some of those out as well a bit later. But we'll, we'll do this tree first. We're going to make a new curves adjustment layer. <coughs> 
I'm going to hold my cursor over the tree area to find out where it uh, lies on the curve here. And as you can see, it's uh, the area we need right down the bottom here. So I'm going to uh, basically try and raise the curve, especially down the bottom area. We just pin that down a bit so we can add a bit of contrast. Um, we're just going to bring it out like that. Click OK. Next thing we're going to do is get the paint bucket tool, foreground set to black, and just fill that layer with black to take the adjustment away. Then we're going to zoom in to touch, get the paintbrush tool, foreground set to white, and we can just now just paint in that adjustment where we need it, like so. Now if we go a bit too far, we don't need to worry about that because we can obviously drop down the opacity on the layer and we may well need as we progress a bit further in the image need to come back what we've got to watch when we do this sort of thing is obviously <clears throat> it's going to draw your eye to certain parts of the image and we need to kind of um, work through the image so that we you know we can attract the viewers attention to the places we want within the shot um, and that's why some of these places we may, may need to come back and just um, darken these down a little bit but uh, that's our first one we'll rename this one tree curve and uh, now we can move on to our next bit right so the next thing <clears throat> I want to do is just to darken down some of the uh, some of the image um, to, to allow these kind of pools of light to stand out more so we're going to make a, another curves adjustment uh, but this time we're going to drag the image curve downwards to darken and you'll also notice as I'm doing that the colors getting more intense and uh, you probably heard me say this before but you can always turn the mode to luminosity if you don't want that to not uh, to not affect the color so much that's at luminosity <coughs> excuse me that's at normal mode so I'm gonna leave it in normal for now <coughs> and now I can add a paint bucket tool fill with black the image like I did before that takes the adjustment away foreground now set to white with the paintbrush tool and again we can just now paint in the darkness where we want it well I don't really need anything shown at the back here so I'm going to paint that down a bit we might even go in and uh, get rid of these sunny little white marks here uh, in a bit um, I want to darken this down a little bit take our eyes off there and down here as well and around here so it's about it's just a matter of just painting in where you want the shading to uh, appear and I said that will then allow the light the nice pools of light to stand out a bit further but as I said earlier you've got to keep an eye on <clears throat> what's happening with the image and where your eye is being drawn to um, at the moment it's fairly still fairly open but uh, if you darken this down too much and start highlighting areas just like make sure you're highlighting the areas where you want your viewer to uh, to to look so bear that in mind just carry on darkening this down a bit I think uh, we'll go so far with the uh, with this curve and then we may well have to um, resort to some actual painting uh, on the layer to uh, darken it as far as you want or even uh, do a bit of burning, dodge and burning uh, but we'll see so I'm, I am now going to uh, just try that on luminosity again not a huge difference to be honest with you no I'll leave it in normal so we'll rename this one um, darken and uh, we'll take a step back a second and see where we're going okay what we're going to do now is just uh, lighten part of the sky but keep the rest of it uh, still fairly dark I mentioned earlier on um, at the beginning of the video I showed you some um, some uh, other images I shot during the night and uh, if you remember rightly I said you know if you get uh, if you get a really good uh, image where you've done your light painting and it's really nice and you're happy with it then a good thing to do is without touching the camera of course is then to forget the light painting you've got that in the bag um, and then just concentrate on getting some good sky shots and that way 
if you did, couldn't get your light painting and your decent starlight uh, sky in one exposure, you've always got the option of stripping in uh, one of your uh, one of your uh, starlight skies. Um, so that is is an option. But uh, with this particular image, I felt that uh, I knew it was going to be a bit tight, but I felt I had enough uh, enough exposure in the sky of this one to do it in one. And I still believe that, but uh, we're going to have to be a bit careful because it is a bit borderline. So what I want to do is keep this area you know, still fairly, fairly dark, but um, just lighten this top area a bit. So what we're going to do is do a curves adjustment layer. Uh, I'm going to just run my cursor over the sky here, uh, and you can see it is, it's right down towards the uh, very bottom of the curve and darker tones. So I'm just going to raise that slightly. Again, I can't go too far, otherwise I'm going to get a lot of noise and also, also other uh, sorts of artifacts and stuff. And I can see some of those coming through now, so I'm just going to just lighten it very slightly like so um, click OK uh, and now what I'm going to do is to get a gradient tool foreground set to black background set to white and make sure that you've got uh, the uh, th this uh, foreground and background uh, preset done and I'm just now going to try if I get this right sometimes it takes a couple of goes I'm going to run my uh, gradient from the bottom upwards to about there and what that does is taking away the adjustment that we've made to lighten the sky away from the bottom half of the image. I might just go over that again, just bring it up a bit further. It's like I said, it's a bit hit and miss sometimes. And again, try to there. Okay, so that's just lightening very much the just the very top of the sky. Uh, I am going to go in with my brush tool with foreground set to black. And again, I just want to take it away from this area. This is the main problem area here. Just in case you're wondering what this red light is, it isn't the sunset. The sunset we had was over this side. This is uh, light pollution, um, or that's one word for it, uh, from a, a, a big main road which runs at the back here. Um, and it's uh, a big roundabout, uh, which is floodlit. Uh, and that's why you're getting that big orange, uh, orange glow, which I think is quite nice. Um, so, yeah, so we're just going to paint that back a bit because I don't want that coming too light. And I'm just going to paint over this side as well, like so. Okay, so what we should have then is just this side, like there, being lightened. I don't really want anything else lightened in this image on this layer. Just that. So we just paint over there a bit, but I think that's pretty good. Uh, what we can do is just do a filter, blur, gaussian blur just to make sure we're not getting paintbrush lines I'm pretty sure we won't but I'll just give it a 15 pixel around there blur okay so that's just lighting that up what I'm going to do in a minute which again it's probably going to think is stupid is I'm going to darken the edges but the very edge of the picture is a little bit more but um, I want to get some light in and around the top of the building here like so, so uh, we'll do that next. We'll do it. Uh, we'll actually, we'll rename this one. We we'll call this one uh, Lighten Top Right Sky. Um, I'm going to leave that in normal mode again. I don't, I don't, just, uh, don't dislike that blue coming through. Um, I'm going to do another curves, and this one we're just going to darken down those edges. Like that should do me, um, and I'm gonna get uh, just my lasso tool and just paint, uh, just draw a lasso roughly around the area, and I'm gonna fill that area with black with the paint with the paint bucket tool. Take away the adjustment, so it's not lightening, um, not lighting the image image in the center, just at the edges. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and give it a full 250 pixel blur. Make sure we do a good job, uh, and that smoothed out those edges a little bit. I think you can see now we've still got a bit of light here in the sky, but uh, bring them up there. Um, so that's that. I'm just going to call, call that one um, edge curve. Again, we may come back to these in a bit just to readjust them again. But that's looking quite good. So you can see the image is now starting to come together a bit. I'm just going to uh, get my paintbrush tool and. Um, with black as a foreground, I'm just going to, again, just going to, uh, sorry, with white as a foreground, just going to bring this in again. I'm just still a bit concerned that I'm going to get a bit of band in there. 
Okay, what I would like to do if I can is just try and bring out some of these little starlights a little bit. Um, to do that, I'm going to turn off the curve, edge curve for a moment. Another curves adjustment. Um, yeah, we'll do a curves adjustment. Actually, no, we won't. We'll do a levels adjustment for this. I can click my preview on. Um, it might help. I just want to see if I can bring out some of these little star trails here. So hold down the Alt key, and we'll see how far I need to take this. There they come. You can see them popping out here now. You can see all the noise coming through now because I tried to lighten it too much. Fill that with black. This might not work, but I'm going to give it a go. And um, now we fill that with black, take the adjustment away. And again, with the paintbrush tool, foreground set to white, and a very, very small brush. We're at 252% at the moment. I'm just going to attempt to run over these star trails and lighten them. And we're going to change this mode to luminosity for this. Okay, like that. I think you get the idea. Let's have a quick look. Turn it off. Turn it back on so you can see. Really bringing those out. And I shall carry on just do these other ones and come back to you in a second. I'll just rename this one. Uh, Star Trails Item. I'll just carry on with that and we'll come back. Right, so uh, here's the before we painted in the stars. Here's after. So we've really just kind of uh, really switched those on. Just made them twinkle a little bit more, which I think works quite well. So um, we're getting pretty much uh, there. It's coming together quite nicely. I'll just turn that edge curve back on. You can see that's now darkened some of those uh, adjustment down, but I think it's still uh, still enough there to make it work. We could just back off this edge curve if we need to, but I'm quite happy with that. Um, so yeah, so I think we need to come back to the tree curve. I think it's gone a bit a bit flat again there, and just see if we can just adjust that a bit more down the bottom here. Just turn that back on a bit, like so. That's better. So as I said before, as we move through the image, quite often we have to return back to certain uh, certain pictures. Um, this one, darken, I feel can come down a bit more possibly. Let's just give it a go. Yeah. Probably about there. Like that. Okay. Again, we might come back and again just when we get in a bit, but uh, uh, it's a matter of just uh, building it up as we go. Um, so, yeah, so what I want to do now is just brighten some of these um, pools of light on top. So, again, you know the score curves. We'll just find out where we need to go, and it's a bit further up the, uh, further up the uh, curves there. Just to give that a light, and I'd like to get a bit of an S in there if I can. Just add a bit of contrast like so uh, fill that with black so foreground set to white paintbrush tool and again um, we can bring the size of our brush up now and uh, just be careful we don't go over the sky too much just bring out those pools of light on the rooftop like that Okay, we can do that inside the barn as well. Just in the centre there. Don't want the edges going too light. Um, and that's it. Just put a bit of a, like a bit of a pull there, so we bring our attention, viewers' attention towards the centre here, and that's what these are doing. You see that? Just brightens that area up and attracts attention. So, uh, of course, one pulls. Of light. That's it. So that's bringing that up a bit more. I feel like I want to kind of darken this side a bit more. So we'll, um, I'm going to have a quick look at this and uh, and to come back to you in a second. Right, a couple of things I've done um, is the following. I've uh, changed the darken mode here 
uh, from normal. We had it on normal, if you remember rightly. And uh, these have gone very red here. So I decided now to change those to luminosity. So that takes a bit of the color cast away. And the tree curve, I've gone a bit mad and I've really steepened the curve there, like so, just to really pick out that tree a bit better. I felt it was still looking a bit flat. Um, so again, I'll say it again, you know, with using curves adjustments, it gives us that power to be able to just, you know, come back to these and reapply uh, any adjustments. Um, next thing I'm going to do is another curves adjustment. I'm going to darken down some of these areas on the side of the building here. So curves and uh, just run your highlight your, your cursor over the building the area there and it's obviously quite light there so I'm gonna pull this down like so this one will definitely be in luminosity mode so we'll do that now paint bucket tool foreground to black blah de blah de blah fill that foreground to white paintbrush tool and now we can just paint in I just want to darken this building down on the edge here and the back here a bit more we also want to just darken this foreground here like so just felt it was a bit too bright uh, we can come in this side and f just darken that background in a bit more there and also the foreground here and what's that do that's helping to do um, bear in mind I'm using a precious sensitive tablet and pen here so um, by using that I can adjust my uh, how, how much darkening I'm doing by the uh, the pressure of the pen onto the tablet so uh, I'm not feeling full pressure here uh, I am more so on the edges here because I want that darker but near the uh, near the centre I'm just doing it slightly lighter to retain some of the uh, detail there so that's that let me just step back out a bit Obviously, if you're not using, if you're using a mouse, what you could do is to obviously darken some of these areas, then come up to here to opacity, and drop your opacity down, and just uh, darken these less. That's one way of doing it. But uh, I'd recommend getting a, a pen and tablet if you do a lot of retouching. So that's before, that's after. Again, it's just helping keep our eye right in the centre where we want it, and and we, now you know really can see these pools of lights com coming out. So we'll rename this one. Um, Selected dark, and I think oops, to darken. Do we use that one before? I don't think so, but anyway, that'll be fine. Before, after, so again, we're just pushing the viewer's eye and giving them a little path to walk through with these light, light patches. Uh, the selective lighten layer now. Um, we're going to come back to that. Uh, the pools of light, I think we called it. I'm just going to add a bit more light here. Like that. Turn it off. Turn it on. Like that. So, there you go. What we'll do now is just double click on my levels that we made earlier. And I just want to see what's going on in the image. Wait for that to load. Come on. There you go. Hold down it, Alt key, and just so you can see, we're still not clipping too much. That's fine. We've got a little bit of a hot spot there. That's okay. We need to sell, otherwise, it's not going to sparkle. Uh, it'll look flat. And again, darkness. We can afford to come up a little bit there. Like so. So that's all within. What's acceptable? We're not going not to lose too much there, and I think we are nearly there. Right, what we're going to do next is um, just darken this edge of this building down again. I've had a look at it, and I still think it's very, very bright in the shot. So uh, what we're going to do is add a curves adjustment layer. I'm just going to drag it down, probably a little bit further than we need to. Click OK. Change the mode to luminosity. We'll rename this one and uh, building uh, darken and now fill it with black paint bracket tool foreground set to black fill it with black take the adjustment away uh, I think what we'll do we'll just go in uh, very quickly and just make a rough selection so we'll get the uh, polygonal lasso tool and just make very 
rough selection around the edge here. Just move, if I can, around here. Like so. Okay, let's just zoom out again. We can now um, fill that with white. Like so. You select that. And then we just paint uh, paint that back a little bit more with black. Make sure our edges are nice and smooth. Let's get a bit, bit of better fall, fall off on there. And I think that's better. What we'll do is just uh, blur this. If you click on the uh, layer mask there with the Alt key, press down the Alt key, and go to filter blur. We can just see how much blurring we need. I just want to soften these edges on the mask. Okay, it's coming in there. Try 10 pixels, like so. That should do us. Alt key, click on the mask again, and let's just make sure we don't get any any sharp edges. It's still picking up a bit of a uh, bit of colour there. Uh, even though it's in luminosity mode, we can actually back off that a little bit if we want to. But that's before, that's after. I think it's just uh, just turn it down a bit. It's a bit too full on. Right, I still want to uh, darken some of these areas down. Um, so what we're going to do is make another curves adjustment. Drag the curve down like so. About there. Change the blend mode to luminosity. Uh, paint bucket tool, foreground to black. Bang that in. Uh, foreground to white, paintbrush. And uh, we're going to do our usual trick of just uh, painting in the adjustment where we need it. Again, remember I'm using a pressure sensitive uh, pen. Uh, you'll have to uh, uh, use the opacity up here just to knock the opacity back uh, if you don't want it going too dark. Uh, I'm just going to gently fade this in. I want the edges darker than the bottom here. And then just gently fade the, the earthy tones there in gently. Same here. I want this to go a bit dark on the edge here as well. So really just kind of pushing, forcing the viewer's eye further into the shot. Uh, that's before, that's after, so that's helping to achieve our aim. In fact, uh, I might just uh, press X on the keyboard. That just uh, will turn our swatches, uh, foreground and background colors around so that I'm now painting with black. I want to take some of this effect away here like so and that's the beauty again of working on adjustment layer it's fully editable so that's a bit better right okay I'm a bit happy with that now um, I think we've really come to the end of our adjustments what I might just try and do just this bit down here I still feel is a little bit too bright I don't want to go too uh, too far down what we can do here is just um, add an empty layer and uh, with a paintbrush tool foreground set to black we can actually just paint in some black gently over this area just help tone it down like so same here and that's just another way another way of uh, controlling that okay so I think next thing to do is to start sharpening this image up so uh, we'll go on to that in the next section but first of all I'm just going to uh, rename this one um, we'll call this one black paint edges okay okay so last couple of mods what I've done I've just um, added a couple of folders here and uh, just stuck our adjustments in that one and the uh, the retouching in any other just so we can keep things nice and tidy um, I'm gonna make another adjustment now um, and this is probably why our last one I'm gonna go to hue and saturation okay and I'm gonna drop down the saturation a little bit 
back to there, but minus 25. I'm going to fill, um, no not, I'm going to get a paintbrush tool, foreground set to black. And what I'm going to do now is uh, paint through the image again and concentrating on where I want the uh, viewer's eye to be concentrated most and I'm just going to paint back in some of that saturation now I'm going to leave this side of the building as it is because that was getting a little bit too OTT in my opinion I want the just lovely reds in the rooftop in fact what I need to do is I'm going to draw a selection over the sky here like so I'm going to fill that with black because I want the sky to retain the colour I gave it earlier uh, so just gonna go over there like that so I want this tree to remain quite a bit of colour in there um, so it's just a matter of just adding the colour just the areas we want to attract the attention and I just want to point out that red is one of those colours that's very very strong and uh, you get any tiny bit of red uh, in a picture, uh, be it uh, just somebody in the distance in a red coat, your eye automatically it will be attracted to that. Um, it's a very strong colour, so you've got to use uh, use red with, with caution, um, so uh, it can really be a very distracting colour. Um, but in this case, it's fine because it's uh, where we want it on top of our building. So that's just another way of drawing attention where you want it using colour. We desaturated the edges a little bit. I'm just going to press X to change my foreground to white and just paint out some of this warmth of the side there. Now we can alt click on the mask and uh, we can see what's going on. We've got this harsh line here where we uh, obviously uh, did the uh, selection for the sky. So we need to uh, make sure we get rid of that. So go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and just add a nice 20 radius or something around that just to blur this uh, this line up a bit. We'll do that again, Gaussian blur, because what we don't want is any harsh lines going through our image. So that's before, that's after, so just knocking down a bit of colour, especially around here on the barn, and uh, around here, and uh, that helps concentrate again, help lead the viewer's eye through to the centre of the picture where, where, we, want, oops, where we want them. Turn those back on a minute. So there we go. So I think we are pretty much finished. Um, what we need to do as a final act is just to try and sharpen this up, and we'll just do that very quickly. Um, turn these layers back on. So here's the before, and here's our image so far. So I do believe that's our image finished. So I hope you've enjoyed that video and you've learned a few tricks, and uh, I hope to catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers.